वेलकम बैक टू द नेक्स्ट एपिसोड ऑफ द नेक्स्ट मार्केटिंग विद एच जे एज इन मीन टूडे आई वॉन्ट टू वेलकम माई डियरेस्ट फ्रेंड जॉर्ज ग्रिफिथ टू द शो सो जॉर्ज इज द ई वी पी ओमनी चैनल स्ट्रैटेजी एट रेलिवेट हेल्थ आई हैव नोन जॉर्ज फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम इन टूडे इज कॉन्वर्जेशन जॉर्ज विल रियली अनर्थ हाउ डेटा कैन रियली हेल्प इन पावरिंग ओमनी चैनल एक्सपीरियंसिस so that it does not stay as a conversation but can really become action also we would touch upon which data is more important is it the real world data that's more important or the real time data that matters so i'm excited to bring this next episode to you today I want to invite uh, someone like who's a really close friend. I think the the only friend uh, in my network probably who knows so much about data and EHR. Uh, probably he talks about EHR while sleeping as well. And he dreams of some EHR platforms. I don't know. And and again, the only person probably who wears a bow tie while sleeping. I think so. <laughs> I I've ne- never seen that person without a bow tie. Right. So want to welcome George Griffith from Relevant Health. Thank you HJ as a pleasure to be here. I can I thank you so much for making time and course to the show. You want to just introduce yourself apart from the bow tie. Yes. VHS. Yes. Apart from bow tie George. So uh I have been in gosh the biopharmaceutical marketing business now for 31 years. Uh even that <laughs> right out of the womb. So uh, I started my career, gosh, back in 1992, uh, end of 91, uh, with SmithKline Beecham. I then went to work for Eli Lilly. And then myself and two other gentlemen started our first business together. And we've always been in digital media before it even... In 92? Believe it or not, yeah, we were actually going to Congresses and capturing the proceedings and putting them on CD-ROM. So the biggest question we used to have from our customers back in 1992 was do doctors even have a CD-ROM drive? So imagine how far we've come to current date. So uh, so yeah, long passionate person about digital media before it was I think it was new media originally the name for it. But yes, excited to talk about data because there was a time when there wasn't data. We didn't know what to do. So Pleasure to be here. This is a world where we talk about data, cloud. You're starting with a world talking about data on a CD-ROM. Right? One of my personal claim to fame about data was we collected data on a thread. One of the good program which I'm very proud to be a part of. Yes, we collected data on a thread and have been improving immunization compliance. Today, let's talk about data in healthcare. I also feel data is a is a very used misused abused word right data technology digital you what is it what really is data well data in my to simplify it if we didn't have data it would be like driving around on streets and roads and highways that didn't have street names speed limits where to go what to do you wouldn't know what to go you'd just be driving around so there would be some purpose you felt I'm driving but are you getting from A to B in an efficient timely manner do you know when you've arrived so data really helps us understand where we're going to go and how we're going to get there and measuring the success of the journey as well but that's a that's an interesting perspective to see how the day is i remember one of the conversations the 4 5 years ago i came across a company which one of my previous employers acquired they said we know uh, much more about every american than they know about themselves yes right that's the kind of data they had access to so for every person we have one sixty data points right, against which we know about each individual yes right and and i feel like how powerful it would be if you know that information right all the information could be like magnanimous right how could you even use that kind of information right so what is your experience 
have you seen data being used in your, if I say previous not yeah, and I was a young boy. Right. <laughs> you know, a lot of these, uh, you know, I try to listen or get educated via books or a webcast or podcast or something each week. And omni-channel is always the threat of it. And of course, there's a, a lot of different definitions. But I guess the definition that I'll say I, I hold as a guidepost for me is personalization of content and trying to figure out in a perfect world how you can tailor a series of solutions together to inform that. We call it that next best action, but you can't inform that until you really know about that doctor. What is the personal information of the healthcare professional in order to give them that right tailored experience? And I think that's where we can go. I mean, I really look at what to differentiate, uh, you know, as a marketer, what you have to be able to do is to have that type of data. So companies that possess that type of data and can personalize and help companies personalize those experience are really going to be the ones that win in the future. Please. So what to understand type of data, right? You mentioned data on a scene at all, right? Yeah. Those were uh, conference recordings. Right. Those were uh, senior uh, key opinion leaders uh, delivering a lecture in a large conference, right? Delivering a research, a new study, new trial, right. etc. So from data in a CD realm, then move to we data uh, uh, in some Excel sheets. Yes. Moving to cloud. Right? How do you see that data progressing now? Isn't First is about type of data. Yes, content. Yes. Yeah. So if I look at data, there, we could call it kind of maybe a couple of buckets. There was the content, those proceedings on that CD-ROM, that content. But then you really have the metrics. So we look at what was missing back then. You didn't know which doctor was watching it. At best, you could put some sort of pixel to see if the CD-ROM was even played. So that was all I could give back to a client from a metrics perspective. Uh, for a performance data. A performance data, you mean? Yes. So I'm a big fan of performance data. I mean, when I think of data, that's where I, I, want, it, I want to have insights into whom we're targeting, but I want to be able to pull the performance data out the back end of every campaign in order to really figure out, again, where do we go next? Hmm. So from performance data in a CD at all, and these days, if you see, the performance data has a different dimension, right? It is able to track which user yes. they want. Right? That's right. So that's from an aggregate level data, you've managed to now arrive at an individual level data. That's it. And we should be able to think about being able to have precision data that triggers an event personalizing a message that comes to a doctor. So some sort of data point that begins the experience that personalizes it for you. So if I know, again, you're, you're wanting to go to Disney. So say you want to take you and your family, you begin to search for things on Disney. We should be able to serve up a series of touch points to you all the way through the buying of the Disney cruise to you're on the boat, to the Star Wars experience, to the whole way back. We should be able to create that same experience for healthcare professionals as well. So, so you mean this data like was more for making you understand as a marketer who did what, who did what, and then what they did, and then what do I need you to do next to provide you? Not to me is so you can spooky, right? Yes. Where you will now be able to tell you what will I do. Where would I go for dinner tonight? Is this the data I can put in? If we use this superpower for good, which meaning that we're creating a better experience for you as a consumer of information and streamlining your life, whether it be as a, a doctor or a nurse or as an individual wanting to go on a Disney experience, to me, that's a positive thing. So it's the intelligent use of that data to guide you to more streamlined experiences. And then the more data I get as the marketeer on the back end, I can inform the next best action to help make it a positive. Yeah, I'm amazed about the possibilities, right? How this data can take. 
I'm sure Alexa and Siri would be listening to us, right? <laughs> We would be bombarded with a lot of different types of apps. That's also power of data. Right. That's already into action. So data moving from a CD-ROM to a cloud, from a personalization to a more predictive kind of an ecosystem. Right. How we see this journey of, of data, right? And when we talk about healthcare category in particular, right? A category where we were, we specialize in. How do you see this data being currently used and and how do we advance this in a future state? I think there is an intent to use it. And what you see is that the average pharmaceutical company, you're talking to the marketer, they have an analytics department, they have some form of a uh, an intake uh, place for all of the data. But there's rarely, unless you're at a smaller pharmaceutical company, a lot of the bigger companies, it's rarely where that marketer that I'm talking to about the campaign is going, wow, I just got this data and I really understand it. Now I'm going to inform this next best action. There seems to be disparate siloed business units, one that gets the data and you wonder, does it just go into a black box? So is it uh, more data in just conversations? Right? Yes. Conversations to action is a journey that needs to happen. Yes. And I think that's the role of intelligent partners, providers, spenders that can come in and help take all of this information and make it make sense, help it and get it the other side. But I hear so many words uh, probably only channel. Yes. Data lay, <laughs> technology, <laughs> probabilistic deterministic, real-world data. I, I hear so many jargon, so many different words. Are they just words or there is something that you see currently happening? There are a lot of big words that most people probably don't know what they mean, to, in all honesty. And I tell you, a simple tip for all the folks viewing out there would be to get a data use agreement up front. Begin with the end in mind. Figure out what it is that you really want to know as a marketer. I mean, in real simple terms, I'd like the physician level data. Okay. I'd like to know maybe when they engage. Okay. What is it on your fantasy wish list? Begin with that with the partner and make sure you align on that. That way, at the most basic level, you should at minimum be able to get an Excel spreadsheet back, sort through this and go, great. Here's how we should now, what we should do next. Okay, so I think this is, uh, this could be a journey from where data was currently used more for academic purposes to making it of some use, right? Have them data, make some analysis, generate some insights. Yes, use it for your future program, right? Do you see a future state, right? I don't know if it is even happening in the present, right? Where you could action this data. I, I absolutely, you should be able to, I mean, the, the marketer that will win in the future is the one that can take the data and turn the quickest action with it. I mean, right now, you know, it goes into, again, this black box, and then we hope it's given some insights. But, I mean, think about it. You've got two immediate actions, no matter whether you're a very small pharma company, you could get an Excel spreadsheet of your data, physician-level data. You could inform a next best action to your rep. Hey, these are the healthcare professionals that engaged with this content. This is what they engaged with. Let me put that into your Viva system and serve it up as a nudge. That doesn't cost me a lot of time, effort, energy, or dollars. Now I could look at this, spread my marketing initiatives out on the kitchen table, if you would, and go, great, I know this piece of information. Which one of these initiatives should I trigger the next best or an, another action to? That's to me is this could be much more simple. Can do you do you see a world where you can start predicting that oh this position will not be giving business in next quarter or so? It will reach out to a different set of physicians, right? Who can potentially start writing scripts if it is yes, like a like a physician program and I should probably not reach them on a EHR channel or on an endemic channel. They are best piece to an email channel. We talk about having this profile, almost like uh, if you ever had baseball cards uh, as a kid, you know, you would have 
all the profiles of this individual. I, you know, I see a world where we have the profiles of all of our customers and we have insights to we know what are the right times to reach them, what are the appropriate channels to reach them through, what might they look like prescribing in the future, and even assembling the right markets we should be playing in. You know, a lot of times we look at things on a national level, you can be looking at things on the right local markets. Which are the five to seven to 10 markets that we can win in? What might be the right personalized story for that local market? But what about these data laws, right? We talk about data privacy, like how do anyone know so much about me and what I, what can I do with, with such data privacy laws? Well, we certainly got you know, larger swim lanes than they do over in the UK and other parts of the country. So, you know, any partner that you work with, they are certainly going to understand those data laws. Put your own company itself. But I just had a call this morning with a client going through their data use and how our data and their data would work. So, you know, as a marketer, you're going to have guideposts given to you by your company and by your partner at the end of the day. But again, going back to what we were talking about earlier, if you can make an experience better for a customer, that's how you're going to win in the future. This surround sound, multiple touch points where you've got a personalized consistency with your messaging. Like, like if I'm talking to a life sciences company, mm -hmm. is the data useful only for a market that was trying to reach out to a physician? Or is it, is it important for, for my sales leadership team? for my finance team, yeah. for my research team. It's certainly important, you know, we mentioned the market reports, but as I was mentioning earlier, the sales leadership, that's at the most minimum level. Tell me, as I started my career as a uh, pharmaceutical sales rep, help me understand what's going on. I mean, long gone are the days where I'm in as a sales representative seeing you four times a month. My goal, I mean, if you think about behavior change, it takes seven, seven touch points to change behavior. Now, my reach and frequency is down to I may see you one time per quarter. I've got to have these digital surround sound touch points to help me out. So you've got to give me ways that I can use an intelligent rep triggered email as a ref. Sales leadership gives me that. Medical affairs teams are playing a huge role right now in marketing. They're coming in. Maybe it's not marketing, but the education of the disease state. They don't get this information. It would be a wonderful proof to be fed this. How do you see this data getting misused? I said, just not using. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in real simple terms, non use. It's all non non use. It's, it's almost, you know, in some ways you go, I'd love to have misuse. At least it would inform a dialogue and it would be used. Yeah, yeah, you would have a conversation with your client, but. Uh, I find myself following up with clients going, hey, you get this position level data and give it to you weekly or monthly. Can I feed this to you? And sometimes weeks pass by and you're thinking, am I really begging this client to have this type of data? Let's be a quiz. Okay. It's a rapid fire quiz. All right. You just have to say a yes or a no. Okay. Data in the future, what would be different characteristics, usage? of that data in the future. Right? Are you able to relate to those words or not? Right? Uh, so if I say uh, data, uh, ocean, are you able to relate more? Or uh, I say data river, data ocean. Should I lay down, by the way, this has a very therapist feel to it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm with you, data ocean. From prediction, right? Uh, would it make humans robotic? No. Because if I know what am I going to do, my neurons will air profile. I will not think because now my computer has told me what to do. No. Okay. No. 100% no. Mm. We have been talking about a lot about physician marketing, right? With so much data used to analyze. Physicians get to know about that deep. Would they be able to use it for their professional purposes and improving their practice if they have access to that data? Yes. Uh, should it be made available? Because as a physician, 
I, I often ask this question to myself, why did I prescribe what I prescribe? Was my motivation logical, rational, emotional, commercial? I don't know, I rank. But if I observe a behavior, maybe I get an answer to that. Yeah, I've never thought about that. It's a very intelligent question. But yes, I think they should have that because I do think it's interesting eh? because I think that's a unique space where you're not taking a decision about yourself. Eh? You're taking a decision for someone else and whose life and death depends on your decision. So what would, if data can tell me what really motivates me to do that, could be an idea in future state right? for a physician, uh, even even for, for a marketeer. Because mm-hmm. right? they will be able to, to use that data to really and create a product, create a communication, create a pitch that really works for them. That I never thought about is it from that angle, but it's a fascinating way to look at it. If we can help doctors think about the ultimate job of a brand, we talk about personalizing communication and building a relationship. If I can build a relationship, not only in the intelligent way I message you, but if I could provide you insights to help you be better as a healthcare professional, Boy, that's really helping a brand and a, their customer grow together. Great. I'm, I'm really enjoying this discussion. In the current state, how should they be using data, right? To make their uh, day-to-day working useful, to make what they do more efficient. Yeah. I would say step one is put a data use agreement in place with the partners you work with because that's going to inspire you to have to think through what you want. It's going to take you off of autopilot with, I just bought something and go and do, but make you really think, what do I want metric wise out of this? And am I in fact getting this? Did I just buy this thinking I'm getting this? So get that data use agreement, then understand how it's going to come to you or who it's going to come to at your building. That's the other thing that go to the black box of the analytics folks, or could it simply come to you in an Excel spreadsheet where you could practically use this? And then you go, okay, now you've got a data use agreement, you know how you're going to get it, and what are you going to do with it? And you don't have to start big. Let's not boil the ocean, to borrow your ocean term. Let's start with, you know what, I'm going to use this data to give to my sales leadership because I'm going to show who's done X with, who's interacted. And then maybe I'm going to think about it as a way to inform, again, a next best step for this other campaign I'm investing in. Those are simple actions that if you just took a moment to think it out, map it out, you know, those are easy things that any marketer should be able to do. Great. Thanks so much, George, for joining the show. And Thank you, Ned. I will be better prepared for the yes, no quiz next. Ha, 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 ha. It's a nice way to, to segment and cluster, but the reality of it is, is people tend to learn differently, people think differently, and they react to media really differently. And in order to engage with somebody, you really want to connect with them on a visceral level and make sure that you are inspiring them to take action.